Welcome back to the course on addressing or processing for music applications. Until now, we have been presenting different techniques for analyzing and synthesizing sounds. It's time to put that in practice and to make use of it in actual uh, music applications. So this week we'll be talking about sound transformations, about how to transform the representations we have been talking about and then resynthesize a sound that is a modified version of uh, the input sound. We'll be talking in this uh, first uh, theory lecture about the short time Fourier transform and about two types of uh, manipulations or transformations, filtering and morphing. And also we will be talking about the sinusoidal model and how we can use it for frequency scaling and time scaling a particular sound. Let's start with the short time Fourier transform. This is the block diagram that uh, we saw in which at frame by frame we are uh, fra selecting a fragment of a sound, windowing it, uh, computing the spectrum, obtaining a magnitude and phase. And now what we are introducing is a transformation block after this, uh, this spectral analysis. From this transformation, we obtain a new magnitude and phase spectrum that can be inverted and we can obtain a new uh, sound that is a modified version of the input sound. Let's first talk about filtering. Uh, we talked about filtering in this uh, course before uh, and the idea is that filtering uh, can be implemented uh, in the time domain using convolution or in the frequency domain using multiplication. So this is what we are using here, the uh, short time for a transform for applying the filtering in the spectrum by multiplying the magnitude and phase spectrum of the input sound with the magnitude and phase spectrum of the filter. Uh, strictly speaking, what we are doing is uh, if we have the magnitude and phase separate, we're going to be summing the phase spectra and multiplying the magnitude spectra. Okay, so the, the filter is expressed by its frequency response that has a magnitude and a phase and the phases are added and the magnitudes are multiplied. Okay, and the equation below shows uh, this idea. So the, the complex spectrum of the output is equal to the product of the two uh, magnitude spectrum of the magnitude spectrum of the filter with one frame of the magnitude spectrum of the input sound. And the phases are sum, but again, is uh, the whole phase spectrum of the filter with one frame of the input sound. And then we can uh, perform the inverse FFT and obtain an output sound. So let's uh, uh, see that in practice. So here we have on top left uh, a fragment of an orchestral sound, a very short fragment, of which we compute the magnitude and phase spectrum. So below that we have the red line is the magnitude spectrum and below is the phase spectrum. And then we have the magnitude spectrum of a filter. Okay, A filter can be a zero phase, so it's normally the important aspect of the filter is the magnitude of it. And in many situations we basically can discard the phase because it has no effect. So in here, we are, what we're going to do is multiplying the magnitude spectrum of the filter with the magnitude spectrum of the input sound. However, since we are in a log scale in dB, we add the two together. So we'll be adding these two shapes that we see here. And the shape on the right is the added result of these two shapes. So it's a modified version of the input spectrum. Okay. And the faces basically are untouched. And then we obtain the output sound, Y, by performing the inverse FFT of that. Let's actually see these for a complete sound. So on top, we see the spectrogram of the complete orchestral sound. Uh, we have heard before, but let's listen to it again. <laughs> Okay, 
and now in the middle we have the uh, shape of the filter that we are applying the magnitude of it okay and then what we are doing is multiplying this shape but every single one of the frames of the input sound in the magnitude spectrum and we obtain the spectrogram below so let's listen this uh, resulting uh, sound clearly much softer because we have uh, attenuated most of the frequencies we have only let uh, pass, so this is a band pass filter the frequencies around a thousand and something hertz and the rest are very much attenuated okay? and these ones we have even boosted them a little bit but of course energy wise uh, we have reduced uh, the energy quite a bit Let's now uh, use the short time Fourier transform for another type of transformation, what we call morphing. In morphing, we start from a sound X1, in which uh, what we're doing is basically the short time Fourier transform analysis resynthesis. And at every frame, we are multiplying its magnitude spectrum by a magnitude spectrum of another sound that is also changing in time. Okay. So uh, what we're doing is uh, we're taking another sound, X2. We are doing a similar short time Fourier transform process. And at every frame, so basically it's a parallel process, we are only using its magnitude spectrum. And then what we're doing is, is smoothing it. Because we are, the idea is that we are applying the general shape of X2 into X1. Okay. And if we see the equation below, Basically, what we're doing is similar to the concept of filtering, but now uh, the, the X2 is uh, time-varying, so it has an L, it has a frame, and we're multiplying these two magnitude spectrum of X2 and X1 at frame L, and the phase spectrum is uh, only the one of uh, X1. So let's see that in practice. Uh, this, again, is the same sound that uh, we played before, the orchestral sound and below it is again the magnitude and phase spectrum but now what we are doing is that this, uh, bl uh, this uh, black line is a smooth magnitude spectrum of another sound but this one will keep changing the same way that keep changing the orchestral sound and we'll be adding these two spectra again because it's in a logarithmic scale and we will be creating a new set of spectra from which we do the inverse FFT Let's do uh, this for the time varying uh, sound. So on top we have the orchestra. We already have heard uh, about it. And uh, let's uh, now listen to the other sound, the X2 sound, which is this speech uh, male sound. Do you hear me? They don't lie at all. And the spectrogram we see in the middle is the smooth version of this uh, X2 sound. So it does not have the detail of X2, it just has the general shape. And these are the two spectrograms that we are summing uh, frame by frame to obtain the lower spectrogram, MY, okay? in which we are definitely seeing that is not X and there is not, it's not X2. It's a modified version of the two. Let's uh, listen to this modified version. Okay, so it clearly has aspects of the orchestra and basically we can understand the speech because the general shape of the magnitude spectrogram is the one of the speech. Maybe one way of understanding this sound is as if the orchestra was playing through the vocal track of uh, this uh, male and therefore uh, reproducing uh, the phonetic kind of... Uh, uh, textures of the speech uh, sound. Okay, now let's uh, go to the sinusoidal model that uh, we already have seen. So we have again the analysis of the sinusoidal model with the peak detection and sinusoidal tracking. And now what we're going to be doing is modifying the resulting sinusoidal values. But there is a small change here. We are not going to take the phase values. The phase values are very sensitive and if we want to make any transformations it's very difficult to take care of them. So what we are doing is 
regenerating the phase uh, values from the frequency values. So we'll be modifying amplitude and frequencies, and then we will be generating the phase values after the transformations, and this is the input for the synthesis, and it's the same synthesis that we have been uh, doing until now. These are the particular operations we are doing on the output of the sinusoidal analysis. So the, the new frequencies and new amplitude are the result of applying some scaling factor, SF, to the input frequency. And uh, also the reading of the input frequencies are uh, controlled by some uh, scaling time factor, which allows us to move inside the kind of input array, input signal, so that we can slow down or speed up the reading of the, the sound. And we do that for both amplitude and frequency. The amplitude, since it's done in the dB scale, we sum the scaling amplitude factor with the amplitude of the input signal. Okay. And the phases are regenerated. They are not from the original sound and they are generated by uh, starting from the previous phase and therefore we need an initial phase at the beginning which can be zero or can be a random value and then at every frame we add the frequency, the new frequency that we are generating so that the phase is automatically unwrapped and generated from the frequency value. So this would be for example a scaling envelope so the scaling factor applied to a particular sound, uh, and therefore it would be an envelope in which we'll, uh, we'll read from the input time, so the horizontal axis is the input time, and it will assign an output time to every input time. So changing the reading position of the input time and modifying its, its length. So let's uh, see a particular example of this time scaling uh, effect in which uh, we start from a madranga sound okay, and we are analyzing that with the sinusoidal model. So on the spectrogram uh, top, what we are seeing is the original signal and the synthesized, uh, well, the, the, tra the trajectories of the sinusoids. And let's listen to uh, the sound first. Okay, and then below it is the transform spectrogram, both the transform uh, sinusoids, so these are the modified sinusoids in which we have spaced them differently, so we have been reading them uh, in a, at a different speed, and if you look at the horizontal axis, the time axis is very different. So the original uh, sound was uh, two seconds long, and now this, uh, this uh, output uh, sound is uh, basically three seconds long. So it has stretched by a factor of 1.5. Okay. So what we are seeing here is the, the, the output sound, but of course with a new time information. So in terms of frames, there are many more frames because the length of the frame will remain the same. So let's listen to the, the resynthesized modified sound. So we have changed the duration, not uh, in a constant scale. In fact, we basically made all the onsets at the same uh, sort of distance. Okay, so we, we, we basically wrapped uh, the, the time information in a way to generate uh, the times uh, in a different position and making the sound a little bit longer. Of course, the number of possibilities here is enormous and we can just play around with uh, this mapping in any way we want. And in terms of the other transformation, the frequency scaling applied to the sinusoids, well, we also need a scaling uh, envelope in which it's time varying. And uh, so here we have the horizontal axis time and the vertical axis is the scaling factor. So that means basically that at uh, beginning of time, we are multiplying all the frequencies of the sinusoids by 0 0.8, and by the end of the sound, we're multiplying all the frequencies by 1.2. So the frequency will start lower and end up higher. So let's see that in a particular sound. So this is the orchestral sound that uh, we have already heard, 
and we see here the sinusoidal analysis of it, in the spectrogram, where we see the original spectrogram and the sinusoidal tracks, and then below it is the transform sinusoids uh, from that curve that we just show. So here we see that at the very beginning, the sinusoids are more compact, so they're lower frequencies, and at the end, they are, they are higher because we have multiplied them by, by 1.2. So let's listen to this modified uh, orchestral sound. Okay, of course it doesn't sound natural because this is not something that you normally would do and there is some distortion, but it can be refined and obtain some uh, good results by applying this type of uh, techniques. There is not much information about the details of how to apply uh, this type of transformations on, uh, on sounds, but uh, if you look in Wikipedia, you can have some pointers and some initial references uh, for uh, sound effects, equalization, and how to apply time scaling and pitch modifications to sounds. That's all uh, I wanted to say in this uh, first theory lecture. So we have gone over uh, some particular transformations using the short time Fourier transform and the sinusoidal model. And then in the next uh, theory lecture, we will continue with the other models uh, we have uh, presented and uh, using them in some other type of transformations. So I hope to see you uh, next lecture. Bye-bye.